Now, next on Outside Source, we're going to learn how a global team of astronomers have announced they found what could be evidence of life elsewhere, and not on Mars, but on the much more inhospitable Venus. Here's one of the team. So what we think we found is phosphine gas in the atmosphere of Venus. Now, on a rocky planet like the Earth, phosphine is a rare gas, and it's mainly the result of life. Um, so it's what we call a biosignature. Now, on the Earth, uh, phosphine is caused by human activity, so through industry or through microorganisms or microbes. And so finding a gas like this on Venus is really exciting because of the possibility that it could have also been produced by life like it is on the Earth. Now, to be clear, this doesn't yet prove that there is life on Venus, but here is what phosphine looks like. This is a computer-generated image. Usually on Earth, this gas is associated, as we've just been hearing, with microbes living in oxygen-poor environments like swamps or in the guts of animals like penguins. Um, let's go back to Dr. Drabek Maunda for more on this those processes don't make enough phosphine gas. So what that means is that we have to start thinking outside the box for other explanations. So phosphine could be produced through some sort of other chemical or geological process that no one knows about on Venus, or there could be a biological origin, um, so life could be producing the gas. Now, Venus isn't exactly a top candidate for where you might think life would be in the solar system. Surface temperatures are more than 400 degrees. The atmosphere is almost entirely carbon dioxide. Probes that have made it there have lasted just minutes before breaking down in the conditions. But 50 kilometers up into the atmosphere, evidently it's a different story. Lewis Dartnell studies the conditions for life on other planets. So there is a habitable zone, a, a range of altitudes on Venus where it's not too hot and not too acidic, that life that we understand here on Earth, so-called extremophile life, extremely hardy survival superhero type cells, could survive that environment in the Venusian clouds. Well, let's bring in Professor Jane Greave. She's the lead researcher on this project. Um, thank you very much for your time. Congratulations on uh, this discovery. Help us understand how significant you see this as being. I think it's part of a bigger picture of looking for life on Mars and um, the moon Europa and so on. But we are very excited um, to have gone out and look for, a, as you heard, a very distinctive biosignature gas. I mean, it was a carefully designed experiment, but we were really blown away when we found it. I'm sure you were. So what do you need to do from this point onwards to work out why the gas is there? Well, we've already run a lot of calculations and ruled out a lot of obvious things. So I think our next step is to carry on using telescopes around the world. Um, and those are slowly coming back into action um, because they've been, the staff have been operating under pandemic conditions. But we hope to find more precisely where this gas is on the planet. Um, and that's our next step. Do you have the technology you need? Is it just the staff you need back at work? Or actually, do you need to develop new types of telescope to fully understand what's happening in Venus's atmosphere? Well, ideally, we'd like some new types of telescope, I think. So um, there's a um, aeroplane-borne telescope, for example, called SOFIA, the Stratospheric Observatory. We'd love to use their telescope once it's flying again to look a bit more at um, where phosphine is on the planet. And in terms of the kind of life that could have produced this gas, what are we actually talking about? Well, it's got to be something pretty small or it would sink through the atmosphere and die in the heat. Um, so we think it's something of microbe-like size, maybe just a few microbes living in a little droplet of sulfuric acid and water. Um, and in that environment where they don't immediately dry out, um, they would perhaps be able to survive if they've got some kind of protective mechanism they've evolved over millions of years, some kind of little shell around them to stop them um, being corroded by the acid. And you've been uh, studying the planets for many years. Did you ever imagine that you would find something like this on, on Venus rather than somewhere like Mars where we might expect to find some life in time? Yeah, I've been interested in habitability in the solar system for years. And in fact, Dr. Drabek Maunder and I did um, a project years ago on Enceladus. Um, and then the Venus thing was just a almost a technology test. Um, weren't expecting to find something, but to say we know how to use telescopes, like the James Clark Maxwell telescope in Hawaii, the first we used, um, and it just came through. Well, congratulations. It's a, a fascinating study and opens up quite a few possibilities. We appreciate you coming on to explain it. And those of you 
who would like even more on that, if you go to the Science tab of the BBC News website or app, you can find extensive coverage of that discovery. Thank you.